hi and welcome back if you're new to the channel my name is Vince thanks for stopping by you're very welcome here indeed so in this video I'm going to compare the blood tests I had taken on the 1st and 2nd of June 2024 that also marks the five-year point of my longevity experiment to all the blood tests I've had taken since I started that's enough waffling off me let's jump in Let's take a look at the supplements I was taking at the time of this blood test. NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, 1.5 grams a day. Trans resveratrol, 1 gram a day on the non-training days. Uh, that's weight training. I do that Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I take the resveratrol on Tuesday, uh, Thursday, sometimes on a Saturday or a Sunday. TMG, 1.5 grams a day, trimethylglycine. Uh, metformin, 1 gram a day, 500 in the morning and 500 uh, with my evening meal. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units per day, 10,000 on a Sunday and a Wednesday, because my last blood test, my vitamin D levels were down quite a lot, and we'll see now if this has had an impact on it. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms per day, MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams a day, L3 and 8 version. Hyaluronic acid, 800 milligrams per day of high molecular weight hyaluronic acid. Quercetin, 2.4 grams a day, only on the first, second and third of each month. Fisetin, 2.4 grams per day, only on the first, second and third of each month. And if you want to know why I take it on these three days and not every single day, there's a link in the description below in my supplement sack that explains all that in a video. Dried parsley, one tablespoon per day with my yogurt. I've got to admit, I haven't been doing that that often. Um, Cert6 activator, 800 milligrams a day. Dim which uh, balances my estrogen and uh, testosterone, 600 milligrams a day, 200 first thing in the morning, 200 between 11.30 and 12 uh, lunchtime, and then another 200 just before I go to bed. Glynac, 800 milligrams per day, and creatine, 5 grams a day, and that's only after the blood test, and I take it then for um, 30 days. After this blood test, I've started taking it, so as the time I'm making this video, I am actually now on the creatine. So let's take a look at my lipid profile. So you can see here that it's much the same as it always is. My total cholesterol is high, as is my LDL. Now, if you watch my last video about the chances of reaching the age of 100, you'll note that the 33,000 Swedes that were followed had a higher chance of reaching the age of 100 if they had high total cholesterol and high iron. Um, my total cholesterol is high and is very high because it's over the 200 they recommend because my LDL is high. Let me show you a quick clip of Sean Baker referencing Dr. Ali when he talks about mortality and high LDL rates. What does LDL do for us? Now, Dr. Nadir Ali is an intermetric cardiologist with 25 years of experience here is explaining the role of LDL in preventing infection. Now. You would be surprised to know that there are animal studies that show that the lowly LDL is the one that soaks up this AGR protein so that quorum is not established and infection is abolished. And LDL can also help reduce inflammation. This is the Leiden 85 study. 700 patients followed for 10 years. And they looked at whether cholesterol predicted their mortality, their cancer death, and their infection. And what we found is that High cholesterol was defined as 300 or greater, 250 was middle cholesterol, and 200 was low cholesterol. The highest cholesterol group had the lowest overall mortality. The highest cholesterol group had the lowest overall cancer mortality. Old people die of infections, pneumonias. The least risk of infection was in the highest cholesterol group. So you can see why I don't really worry about the fear mongering that goes on from the vegan community talking about LDL as a single marker being the highest risk for um, heart disease. The only other one that's in the red, you can see here that my LDL, HDL ratio is high. It can go as high as 3.5, mine is 3.69, so not that much higher. But the reason that's high is because my LDL is high. And as I said, I'm not too bothered about that. So that's it for lipid. Let's have a look at blood sugar. You can see here now it's 5.8. Now, in the rest of the world, 5.8 <clears throat> is in the pre-diabetic range, so you'd be increased risk. But for some reason here in the Philippines, as long as it's below 6.5, it's not really an issue. So here in the Philippines, it seems to be they don't have the pre-diabetic range. You can be okay, pre-diabetic, no reason for metformin until you hit 6.5 and then they will start to prescribe metformin. So 5.8 
is only just in the in re increased risk range, which is where I've been most of the time I've been doing this since October 2019. It dropped down to 5.5 there in May of 2023, which I'd like to see again. Um, I'm happy with 5.8. My average blood glucose is 119.8. So that's back down now in the excellent control group. That's it for blood sugar. Let's move on to my liver profile. So my liver profile, I won't um, hang around on here. Everything there you can see is within reference range. Everything is blue. The one here that's uh, pinkish color is because they've changed the reference range, although not too much. So nothing really to talk about on my liver profile. Going across to my renal profile, you can see here my blood urea nitrogen is high. Um, that said, when I was in the Middle East, um, back in 2021, this score would have been no problem because it was 7 to 25. Then when I was there, they changed it from 7 to 22.6, so it would have been just over. Now I'm in the Philippines for some reason, it's 7 to 18. So a bit confusing um, that although my blood urea nitrogen has remained fairly constant, um, two or three changes in the reference range um, seems to have me with an issue. Um, I may speak to a doctor about this, but I'll probably give it another three months just to see what happens to my bun uh, figures. So that's it for renal. Let's move on to thyroid. So thyroid, you can see here that my T3 and T4 are within range. Um, it's usually pink and blue. You can see this one's now black because, yep, they've changed the reference range again. Um, so T3 and T4, no problem. My thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, it's got NA, not, not applicable, not available. So in both of the hospitals where I have my blood test done, because they can't all do everything I want in one, um, that was not available. Moving on to vitamin D, you can see here, vitamin D is now up to 89.05 from 47.62. So obviously using the 10,000 or taking the 10,000 on the Monday and Wednesday has improved it. Um, you'll know if you watch the channel that vitamin uh, D is not a vitamin, it's actually a hormone and is responsible for very many metabolic processes to do with health and vitality. So I'm always going to try and keep my vitamin D levels in the reference range and possibly, or if possible, as high as possible in that reference range. Vitamin B12, you can see here, it can be between 211 and 911. Mine is now 676 up from 377. That's probably because I've eaten quite a little bit, or I've eaten quite a bit more red meat during the last three months. So that's it for my vitamin B12. Moving on to testosterone, you can see here mine is 688. For an adult male, it should be between 86 and 788, which I think, my humble opinion, far too wide a bracket. There should be um, more segments in that, depending on what your age is. Um, also, if you're between the age of 16 and 21, your testosterone needs to be between 118 and 948. So mine at 688 means that I now have the testosterone of a teenager, um, somewhere between the age of 16 and 19, which is great. Um, if you drop below 300, then that makes you a candidate for testosterone replacement therapy. Um, I'm not in that range yet. Actually, I'm nowhere near it. So that is a good thing too. Iron, you can see here that my iron and my iron, um, total iron binding capacity are now both low. Um, my iron has been low for the last um, 3, 6, 9, 12 months, which is when I got here in the Philippines. So something in my diet has changed, um, although I can't think what it is to drop the iron down that much. If you remember back to what I talked about in regard to that um, chances of getting to 100 study with the with the 33,000 Swedes, high total cholesterol and high iron meant you had a better chance of getting to 100. So I've already ordered it. I'm now going to start supplementing with iron. That's not to say I'm going to continue trying to get it through my diet as well. So I'm going to look at other ways that I can up my iron through my diet. Next is C-reactive protein. They say anything less than 10 is good. Mine is less than five. So I'm happy with my CRP score. That's it for CRP. Moving on to amylase, no problem there. 76 is well inside the range of 28 to 100. Lipase, anything between 14 and 280, 35 is well within range there. So I'm happy with that. Blood one, you can see all within range apart from this one, which is my mean corpuscle hemoglobin concentration. And it says a low 
uh, MCHC means that someone's red blood cells do not have enough hemoglobin. So that's OK. I get that. Go to hemoglobin 14.5, which is within the range of 14 to 17.5. Now, it is only 0.5 over the 14, but then the range is only from 14 to 17. So I'm not too sure why that one is in red. So that's it for the first part of my blood uh, analysis. Second part of blood, you can see here, everything is within reference range. These ones that are not filled in anymore, it's because I can't get that done at the hospitals where I got my blood tests um, conducted. Estradiol, you can see here, it's gone from 9.8 to 16.4. That's fine because 42.60 is now the upper range. Uh, remember, I started to take DIM to get my estradiol down because it was 40. The re top reference range was 40 and my first test was 41.1. Um, so the, the 600 milligrams of DIM I take per day dropped it from 40 to 30 uh, and has kept it well under the 42 for that period of time. So I'm more than happy with the DIM that I'm taking. EGFR, you can see here, anything over 90 is classed as normal. That's kidney function. I'm on 91. So again, nothing really to talk about there. Happy with that. Urine analysis, everything there. You can pause the video. Everything there is within reference range. These three are now in pink because, funny old thing, they've changed the reference range again. So that's it for my urine analysis. Well, I think all in all, not too bad at all. Uh, I'm glad I've got my vitamin D levels now back up to the top end of the sufficient range, because as we know, vitamin D is essential for many bodily functions. And as soon as the iron supplement arrives, I shall start to take that. And hopefully my iron scores will also get back well into the sufficient range, because as I mentioned in the video, the last study that I looked at said that high total cholesterol and high iron gave you a better chance of reaching the age of 100. So let me know in the comments below what you think about my latest blood test results.